Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I make a video every week mostly about makeup and what I have in my collection and what I'm using. I'm currently on a no buy, so I will link that video here and below so you can kind of see why I'm on a no buy right now and kind of shopping my stash and using what I have. I also filmed a video a few weeks ago of this makeup look. This is just my everyday go-to look that I typically wear on a work day and it's also just been really easy to throw on in the morning regardless of what day it is, but I will link that video below as well. But today's video is going to be something a little different. I'm not going to be focusing on makeup. Instead, I kind of wanted to do a mid-year check-in. So June, the end of June really, is exactly six months into 2023, which is kind of hard to believe that we're already halfway, but it's a good time to kind of sit down, look at what you've accomplished so far, maybe some things have changed, things happen, you know, and just kind of reevaluate what your goals were for the year and just where we're at. So if you want to see and hear some of the things that I'm working on for 2023, then just keep watching. into my little checklists that I've made. I wanted to talk about how every year, I, I don't necessarily like the word resolutions. And I don't even really like the word goals that much, but that's, it's a better word than resolutions to me. So at the beginning of every new year, I don't really set like new year's resolutions. Instead, I've kind of been picking a word that I want to kind of describe and define my year going forward and kind of focusing everything around that word. So then that way you're not picking really specific things that you're going to feel like you're failing out really quickly. Instead of having that mindset, picking a word has really helped me just kind of in more of the way I approach things. So my word for 2023 is intention, which just means be more proactive and have more initiative on certain things. I feel like so many of us always say things like, I should work out more, I should drink more water, I should save money, things like that. So instead of doing those I should, I should, I should, I'm going to start doing things with more intention and at least attempting them. I'm not going to use those phrases anymore. So instead of constantly being like, man, I should really work out more, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm just like, you know what, stop saying you should do it and just do it. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. I'm not trying to be like a bodybuilder or an Olympian, but like if you just wake up every day and do 10 to 15 minutes of something, you're at least intentionally trying to do something for yourself. So that's my word for the year. So I just kind of keep that in the back of my mind as I go through my checklists. So let's jump over and get into some of those. So I have my checklist separated into three different categories, personal, health and wellness, and then socials and content. So we'll start with the personal. I will try and put a screenshot of my checklist up here so that you can see kind of what I'm working with. But the first thing on my checklist is to keep working on establishing a better nighttime routine. It sounds simple, but it is so hard. There's so many distractions in the world today. It's super easy to just want to fall asleep watching TV or staying up a little later than I should, but I've really been working in the past month especially to kind of start getting ready for bed a little earlier, not really being like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling tired, now I'm gonna start getting ready for bed. I'm trying to do it like more like 30 minutes before, so that's when I would like go do all of my skincare and like brush my teeth. I have been trying to get back onto taking um, a melatonin pill every night about 30 to 40 minutes before I'm ready to try and fall asleep. And that really helps as well, just being through the night. I'm a very light sleeper. So I think that's also why it's important for me to keep working on establishing a nighttime routine. And then I'm trying to get better about limiting my screen time after a certain point in the evening. Sometimes that's hard because I'm trying to read more before I go to bed. And a lot of times I am reading on my Kindle, which is technically a screen, but I feel like it's it's still different than just watching TV. It's not as mindless, I guess. So I'm really trying to work on that. I, I've been making some good progress, but I think I can still get a little more routine about it. So we will keep working on that. 
And then speaking of reading, um, checking in on the books that I've read so far this year, I use Goodreads and I always set the yearly goal for myself on there. They have a reading challenge and you can set how many books you want to try and read in a year. I'm a pretty avid reader, so I usually pick a pretty high number. This year I picked 60, which sounds like a lot, but it's actually less than I had last year and less than the year before. I'm currently at 15, so not really great to be that far behind halfway through the year, but I do typically pick up my reading in the summer. It just feels more like a time for reading. We have a family beach vacation planned for the end of the month, and that's when I really get a lot of reading done because I literally just sit on the beach all day, every day, and read. So I will put on the screen some of the books that I have already read this year, and as I'm filming this, I am almost finished with another book, Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. That one is so good. I also really love her other book, and I'm really hoping to get my hands on the new Emily Henry book before we go to the beach so that that can be one of my beach reads. Another personal goal or thing that I'm trying to work on on my checklist is eating out less. My husband and I have actually been really good about this so far in 2023. I am also working on trying to be better about it during the work week. So it's, it's always tempting at least like one day a week to go out to lunch. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you have the money to do that and it's something you need to do for yourself or it's like a social thing, like I totally get that. But there are just times I was noticing like I would just go out to lunch once a week because I kind of had in my mind like, oh, I should do that once a week just to do it. And really I was kind of like, I don't need to do it that much. It honestly, for me, it takes a little more time because then you gotta like get to the place and order your food. And you know, if you only have an hour-ish for lunch, it kind of cuts down the time that you have to actually sit there and eat. So I've actually really been enjoying, now that the weather is nice, bringing my lunch every day to work. And luckily I work next to a park area, so I can usually go outside and eat my lunch at the park. And so it's it's been a lot nicer to just bring my lunch and be able to go out there and sit and have a little bit more time to eat. And then usually I read. It's also a way to save money, which we're kind of trying to focus on too. We, we were looking back at some of our finances from years before and realized, especially during the pandemic, we literally didn't eat out for like almost a year and we saved so much money that year. And it just, you know, that's not always realistic because like I said, sometimes you need to go out just to treat yourself or if it's a social thing, of course, you don't want to deprive yourself of something that makes you happy or deprive yourself of going on a social gathering. But I just kind of had realized that there had been times when I was going out to eat, I was just doing it to do it. And I wasn't really like enjoying my food or appreciating it. And so I kind of want to be a little more mindful about eating out. Another kind of personal slash semi-related to content thing that I've been working on is what I mentioned before, keeping up with my makeup and beauty no buy. But going forward, my no buy technically will be over in a week or two. But going forward after that, I really want to still focus on having a low buy. So really reducing my spending on beauty and skincare and makeup things, unless it's something I really, really, really want and have researched and just like want to have in my collection. Or, you know, of course, if I run out of something, I will go repurchase if I don't have anything currently in my collection to replace it with. But this has also been a helpful money saver as well. I have a link below the video where I kind of go through all the things that I had already purchased in 2023 and the total dollars that I had spent so far on it was way more than I was anticipating. So it's important to me to kind of keep that low buy going, going forward so that I don't overspend in the rest of the year on beauty and makeup, things that I don't truly need. But one thing that I am willing to spend a little bit more money on for the rest of the year is my wardrobe. I really feel like I'm at a point where I kind of need a wardrobe reset. I was going through a couple weeks ago and pulling some things out for Goodwill and I was just noticing that so many of my basic items like my tanks and my t-shirts, they're just getting a little old and threadbare. I was looking at some tank tops that I wear pretty much every summer because now that it's summer, I'm pulling those out more and I was just like, you know what? I think I bought these like four or five years ago and they're just they're stretched out they're definitely thinner than they were when i first purchased them so just kind of looking at 
revamping and kind of replacing some of those items in my wardrobe, trying to find maybe some better quality pieces and not focusing so much on quantity, but quality. I don't want to say that I'm trying to create necessarily a capsule wardrobe because I do, you know, have an office job nine to five every day. So I do need a variety of like business casual wear, but I just kind of want to revamp some of that. I do use um, Stitch Fix, but I only get that once a quarter because I do kind of feel like it's still a little pricey, especially if you end up buying everything that they send you in a box. But I will leave a link for that down below where I believe you can get $25 off your first box. I've always had pretty good success with Stitch Fix, I usually end up buying at least one or two things every single time I get a box, if not the entire box. So I'll leave that below. But yeah, revamping and kind of resetting my wardrobe is something I wanna focus on. The next category of goals and check-ins that I wanna make for myself is all about health and wellness. So I will put that checklist on the screen here so you can see what I am working with. I really want to start trying to do more morning time workouts at home. So I've kind of been doing this very recently in the last week or two. I do get up really early for work every day. I get to work every day at 6.30, but luckily I live pretty close to my workplace, so I don't have a very long commute, which is why I'm able to make that schedule happen for myself. But the past couple days, I have been getting up 30 to 40 minutes earlier than normal and getting in like a 30 minute like weight workout at home. So I use the Peloton app mostly for my at home workouts. So they have 20 and 30 minute strength workouts on there that you can get a lot in in those 20 to 30 minutes. So some mornings I'll do a 20 minute arms workout and then a 10 minute abs workout. And then though I have time then to still do a quick rinse in the shower and then get back to my regular morning routine and still get to work on time. It really helps me to kind of get my day going and then I'm kind of already like invigorated and I've worked out, I've accomplished something already so early in the day. And then it can help later in the afternoon as I get to work at 6.30, I get off at three. So then I have even more time in the afternoon if I wanna do something a little lighter, like just go on a walk at the park or now that it's summer, if I wanna go hang out by the pool, I feel like I have more time to do that rather than feeling like, oh, I really need to come home and like do a workout instead. I've kind of already checked that off my list. Of course, that's not doable every single day. I do split my workouts. I do like half strength and then half cardio every week. So on the cardio days, I don't really wanna wake up early and do that before work because I do get, those are a little more like intense for me. So I do get like incredibly <laughs> sweaty and then I would have to do like a full shower and wash my hair. And I don't wanna wake up so early for that on weekdays. I do want to focus on trying to get in some more of those strength workouts in the morning. Or on days when I am gonna do cardio after work, even if I just wake up 15 minutes early and do like a 10 minute like light arms workout just to kind of get my day going. So that's something I really wanna to try to do going forward for the rest of 2023. Also speaking of fitness, I have kind of been toying with the idea of trying to find a group fitness gym to join just so that I can be working out with other people and maybe meet some new people who are my age or who kind of had the same fitness and health goals that I do. That's something that I don't know if anybody else has ever struggled with. I definitely am not like a pro athlete or competitive or trying to do any of that, but I do enjoy working out and running. I like to do 5k races and stuff, but it is kind of lonely when you feel like you're on your own. And you know, my husband is supportive, my friends are supportive, but if they're not there actively doing it with you, it can be a little lonely at times. So I've kind of been, yeah, thinking about trying to find a group fitness gym. My issue so far in my research has been cost. Some of those gyms are just like crazy. Like I don't want to pay 150 or $200 a month just to be able to go do some yoga. That's just not, realistic for where I'm at in my financial life right now. So if anybody has any suggestions of group fitness gyms, I think the most affordable one I've found so far is potentially Orange Theory, but I've never done Orange Theory, so it makes me a little nervous. So if anybody has any suggestions or you've done Orange Theory and would recommend it, please let me know. I would love any opinions or advice on that matter. Another thing I wanna incorporate into my fitness goals and routine is stair climbing because that is something that does not require a specialized piece of equipment. There are stair climbing machines, but you don't need that in order to get that type of workout. 
I live close to a place that has a pretty big set of stairs outside and also my complex that I live in, I have to walk up three sets of stairs every day just to get to my apartment. So I really wanna start incorporating that maybe once a week or maybe that's what I do on the weekends, kind of as a mixture of cardio and strength and kind of switch things up. But if I can kind of start doing the stair climbing every so often, I think that will really help with my leg strength, which is something that I kind of have always struggled with. So I don't know, and it would be something just different to break it up. And the last thing on my health and wellness goal list is my diet and meal planning. I don't, I don't like the word diet necessarily, but I really mean diet more in the sense of like nutrition. So my husband and I, we are trying to adopt more of the Mediterranean meal planning diet regimen. I'm really trying to focus on consuming less like desserts, less dairy, and less carbs. Completely cutting those things out is not realistic or sustainable in the long term, but I'm thinking that if I can kind of do that maybe mostly during the weekdays, and then on the weekends, that's kind of when you can be a little looser, but in order to do that, it's been really helpful the past month to really plan out our dinners every night ahead of time so that we know that, okay, let's, let's make sure that we're planning dinners that don't have dairy or dinners that are meatless or whatever we're trying to accomplish for that week. So I really wanna keep that going. For the first half of the year, we subscribed to Blue Apron. So we were getting that a couple times a month, which is helpful because it takes the planning out. It is semi cost effective, but then you still have to do your supplemental shopping on top of the box delivery because you do need to get like your eggs and any other dairy. Like we still are always gonna have milk and like creamer and stuff in our fridge for baking and coffee and cereal. So the Blue Apron is not always as cost effective at the end of the day when you really add up the numbers. But if we can keep sticking to planning out our meals and really sticking with the Mediterranean style of eating, then I think that we will start to feel healthier and have more energy going forward because we've already started to notice that in the past month. The last section I have is about content and socials. If you've been watching my videos for any length of time, I've only been making them for about probably eight or nine months. I started in late 2022. So my goal starting out 2023 was kind of to maintain posting one video a week. And so far I have succeeded in that. I skipped one week, I believe in like April or May, but beyond that, I have successfully posted one video every week and I wanna maintain that going forward. Where I do have a full-time job during the week and then I do this kind of just for fun and as a hobby and to kind of learn new skills. So I really don't have the time or the capacity to do more than one video a week. But I wanna keep that consistency and kind of start figuring out more what's the best day and time to post my videos, what topics are doing well, what do I care about sharing and just kind of stay on that one video a week schedule. But in connection with that, I also want to start experimenting with like TikTok and Instagram and like making reels. I have never really done that before, but it's something that I think would be definitely a skill set that would be helpful in the future. Similarly on Instagram, I wanna get better about posting stories and those stories aren't necessarily about makeup. I just want to be better about documenting my everyday life and finding something to appreciate every day, even if it's kind of repetitive, but just posting more about my life on my stories and kind of keeping up with that so that I have those memories to look back on. Similarly, I don't really do feed posts very often on Instagram, and I feel like some of that is I just don't always think about it in the moment, but then the other part is usually by myself, so taking photos of yourself is a lot more work, and I need to kind of experiment and learn more about not necessarily photography, but how my phone best works to take certain pictures, good backgrounds, poses, things like that. Looking at other people's Instagrams that I like and curating an aesthetic I feel like for my feed. And again, my Instagram is not going to be completely devoted to makeup or beauty. It's gonna be just my life and what I'm doing and makeup and beauty is just a part of that. But I still wanna kind of get like an overall aesthetic and feel for what I want my feed to look like overall and then start figuring out how to make that happen. The last thing I have on my content and socials checklist that I haven't been so great at so far this year, but I'm working on it going forward, is pre-planning my video content. So I was kind of just 
doing it week by week for a while. While that's not necessarily super stressful, it, it made it really hard to kind of get ahead if I knew that something was coming. So like this summer, I know that I'm gonna be gone on vacation for a period of time. So I wanna make sure that a video gets posted the week that I'm gone, so I need to have it pre-filmed and edited already. And same thing, the week that I ended up skipping posting a video back in the spring was because I am also taking graduate courses right now to complete another master's degree. And usually towards the end of a semester, that's when you have like final projects and exams or group things that are going on. And so it does get a little more hectic with my schedule than the rest of the, the semester. So I just wanna be more prepared for those situations and kind of get myself ahead a week or two on videos so that if something were to come up, I've already got a video ready to be posted and then I can just get back on track after dealing with whatever's going on that week. So I sat down the other day and I went ahead and put all my video content ideas for every week on my calendar basically through July. So I feel a lot better about that. Those are all the goals and things that I kind of wanted to check in with myself about that I've been working on so far in 2023 and what I want to do better going forward. I know this was a different type of video, but I hope it was helpful and kind of made you think about what some of your goals are going forward. It's, it's a good time of year to just check in with yourself. We're halfway through. It's good to look back and reflect on things that you have accomplished and make that a positive situation and not necessarily reflecting so much on things that you haven't accomplished that you feel like you failed at. I don't like to use the word failure because like I said, sometimes life just happens. It, you have to be a little flexible, but all we can do is be better going forward. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.